Hey everybody, it is Zach here from the Ed Boys, and welcome to my 1 to 99 Hunter Guide. Hunter is definitely one of the less popular skills in the game to train, but it also has a lot of very fast methods to use, and a few good money makers to use, so it's really, it's kind of a nice skill, it's just kind of boring to do. The methods discussed in this guide are the ones that I would use from getting to 99 Hunter. This does not necessarily mean that there's every possible way to gain Hunter XP, just the information that I would have liked to have when I was starting Hunter. I'll be starting the guide like I normally do with the quests that can give you a jump start in your hunter training, though it is a strange short list for hunter. I'll then talk about birdhouse traps and how you can use them for some passive hunter gains afterwards going into the actual leveling guide, and finally the alternative methods for those who weren't so happy with the leveling guide. If at any point after I finish a section of the guide you still have any questions, feel free to just ask in the comments section below so I can get back to you as soon as possible. Jumping into those quests, the only quest that actually gives you any Hunter XP that also only requires one Hunter is the Natural History Quiz at the Varok Museum. This isn't actually a quest though, so it's not going to give you any quest points, but it only takes like 5 minutes and it'll give you a 1000 Hunter and Slayer XP, which would jump you from 1 to 9 Hunter and skips the very first section of the leveling guide. The other Hunter quests require higher than 9 Hunter to get started, but the list felt empty without them, so I threw them on there. Unfortunately, with Hunter, 9 is as far as you're going to get without catching anything. I guess things like genie lamps could get you there, but quests are not going to help out. With at least 5 Hunter and 5 crafting, you're going to start laying down birdhouses to catch birds over time. You are going to need to complete the Bone Voyage quest so that you have access to Fossil Island where the traps are located. Higher level houses are going to require higher crafting and Hunter, but they'll also give you more Hunter XP per house. Making a birdhouse, you're going to need a chisel, a hammer, a clockwork, and some logs depending on what tier of house you're making. A birdhouse can be used on a trap spot to set the trap, and then filled with hop seeds or herb seeds to actually start catching birds. It does require 10 seeds, unless you used wild blood seeds or any herb seeds that are renars or higher, then it would only require 5 of them. It'll then take just under an hour to use up all 10 spaces in the house, and once it's full of birds it can be looted and it'll drop some raw meat in the ground and you'll get some feathers and have a chance at some birds nests. With higher tier houses, you have a better chance at getting nests, since there are four different spots. You can get like 1k to 4k Hunter XP per run, and it takes very little time to do it. It's similar to doing herb runs for getting passive farming XP, but it's very quick to do a birdhouse run, and a lot of players don't really like regular Hunter training, so this gets you some good XP over time, so you don't have to do traditional routes as much. This is not necessarily a quicker way to do Hunter, even though it only takes a few minutes of your time here and there. The XP per hour you're getting while doing Hunter isn't any faster doing birdhouses than it is with regular Hunter, you just don't have to sit down for a few hours at a time to do it. There are a few hunter shops around the game that sell really all the hunter supplies you're going to need for the most part. Generally, I would just buy it from the Grand Exchange, but there are Iron Men out there who can't necessarily do that. And I know at least one of you, Iron Man or not, would have complained that I didn't discuss hunter shops. The only one that I've ever really used is located in Yanil. Now let's get into this leveling guide. On um, the note of traps that we just got off, I guess, uh, any trap that I tell you to bring, make sure you're bringing extras with you. Anything that can happen out there, like logging out or just AFKing too long and you lose some traps, the worst thing possible is to be stranded out somewhere without a trap and having to go back to the bank. For those who didn't do the museum quiz, you should catch Crimson Swifts from 1 to 9 Hunter. These are located in the Filled Up Hills, which is south of Castle Wars. You're going to find these birds on the beach, and you do need a bird snare to catch them. You can only set one at a time at a currently, but again, you should probably bring a couple with you just in case you AFK too hard, or even disconnect, could be something out of your control. Early bird catching feels extremely slow, because it is pretty slow, but it's early level, so you don't really need that many catches, and overall, you're only going to need to catch 29 birds to get through this whole section of the guide. Levels 9 to 20, I would move on to Copper Longtails. These are located north of Eagle's Peak in the Piscatoris Hunter area, and there's also some located east of the Land's End, which is in Zaya. They are the exact same process as Crimson Swifts, but obviously just a little bit more XP per catch overall. You are going to need 58 Copper Longtails to get up to 20 Hunter. From 20 to 29 Hunter, I would move on to Tropical Wagtails, which are located back in the Felled Up Hills Hunter area, but a little bit deeper into the forest than the Crimson Swifts were. These can be caught right at 19 Hunter, but I just wait for 20 so that you can now place two traps at a time, and again I suggest bringing extras just in case. It doesn't hurt to gain a few levels past the Hunter requirement either way, just so that the new method isn't super slow right out of the gate. If you're already getting tired of bird catching, don't worry, you only need to catch 94 birds here, and then you're all done with catching birds. From 29 to 47 Hunter, you're going to be catching Swamp Lizards with a net trap. This requires a small fishing net and a rope for each trap. 
You do need to complete the Priest in Peril quest to unlock the Mauritania area, which is where these are located. When you hit 40 Hunter, you can unlock a third trap, so you should bring four or five sets of traps with you. Swamp Lizards are very cheap, so you should just catch and release. It's going to slow you down too much to bank them, and it's definitely not worth your time. This is the first catch and release part of the guide, so it's worth mentioning that you can turn on your shift drop in your in-game settings. That's the wrench next to where you log out, and then the joystick for controls, and finally turn on that shift key icon. You can now just hold shift and click on a lizard to release it, or shift click for other items just to drop them. You're going to need to catch 579 swamp lizards to get the 50 hunter. Unfortunately, if you don't like Nat Trap Hunter like Swamp Lizards, there's a lot of that coming up in this guide, but there is an alternative for some of these levels in Falconry. The Falconer is located near Eagle's Peak, near where you caught those copper longtails. It costs a 500 coin fee to get started, and you do have to have your hands free to use the Falcons. Falconry is pretty click intensive compared to Swamp Lizards, since you don't have to wait very long for the Falcon to catch it compared to waiting for a lizard to get caught in your trap. Once you get the hang of Falconry, it can be slightly better XP rates than Swamp Lizards, but for most players, by the time you get started with faster XP, XP, you're already ready to move on because you've gotten a high enough level anyway. You can only catch spotted kevits of 43 hunter, but if you stay long enough to unlock the other kevits, they are reasonable XP rates for skipping net traps altogether, but they are a pretty unpopular option. From 47 to 60, you can move on to orange salamanders, which are located in the desert, so you're going to make sure to bring water skins with you. Or if you had a desert amulet 4, you could bring that, but most players at 50 hunter may not have those diaries done yet. It's also a good idea to bring a knife with you. You could use that on a cactus to refill your water skins if needed. Orange salamanders aren't any different to catch than swamp lizards. You're just going to need to catch 770 of them this time to get all the way to 60 hunter. From 60 to 70 Hunter, it's time for Red Salamanders, which are located in this Hunter spot just north of Castle Wars, and are caught just like Swamp Lizards and Orange Salamanders. At 60 Hunter, you can use four traps at once, which is going to help out with XP rates here a good amount, and you shouldn't be here that long. Level 70 to 99, you could go catch Black Salamanders out in the wilderness. I usually use the Burning Amulet to teleport out there and just run north. These are very fast XP for not much effort, but zero profit since you catch and release just like the other small hunting. Obviously, being out in the wilderness does add some risk, though Black Salamanders aren't a huge hotspot since you aren't risking very much money. You can place an extra trap in the wilderness though, which means at level 70 you can be placing 5 traps out there, and at 80 plus Hunter you can use all 6 trap locations to catch Salamanders. Using 6 traps is going to keep you busy with resetting them but it's also when you're going to start to see really good xp rates another option for 70 to 99 is red chinchampas you unlock red chinchampas at 63 hunter but right at 63 it's pretty slow to catch them and it can be very frustrating 70 plus will at least help a little bit but it's going to be a little bit slower until you get up into the 90s that's when you get really good xp rates Red Chinchapas are located in the Felda Hills Hunter area, same as those tropical wagtails. They can be crowded very often, but there's also a private hunter area that can be unlocked by completing a Western Hard Province Diaries, which gives a little bit more options to find an open space, though it's not a private instance necessarily, it's just another area to use. Red Chinchapas aren't bad in the XP department, and they are one of the best skilling moneymakers in the game. When picking up a trap that has been set off, you can either click Check the Box Trap to just pick it up, or you can click Reset to automatically pick it up and put it back down. Auto placement takes slightly longer than checking it and putting your own trap down, so I usually just skip the reset method. But if you're using reset and you're on rune light, there's a plugin called Menu Entry Swapper that gives you an option to put reset as your left click option, which makes this a little bit more chill for the slower replays. It's also possible to 3 tick traps, the same way you can 3 tick fishing, wood cutting, mining and whatnot. 3 tick hunter is probably the easiest 3 tick skilling activity, and when you're placing a couple traps in a row, you can get them all to reset in a chain very quickly. Like my other skilling guides, I plan on making a full video on everything you would need to know for 3 tick hunter just so that this video isn't extremely long. 3 tick skilling gets pretty boring for a lot of players, but it is easy to just bring your 3 tick supplies and try it out if you're not feeling it, or if you've been doing it for a while and you need a break, you can go back to just placing the traps normally. 3 tick or not, chimchapas are really good for XP and GP. At 73 Hunter, you can catch Black Chins, but I'd give it a few levels just like Red Chins. So from 80 to 99, you can step back into the wilderness to try these out. You do get that extra trap, so bring 6 plus box traps with you. Black Chins are a hotspot for PKing, so it doesn't hurt to bring some tank gear, a royal seed pot, or at the very least, don't camp here for hours just in case. If you had like a thousand plus Black Chins, you'd lose them all to a PK or if they showed up and KO'd you. Black Chin Choppas are better XP per hour and GP per hour than Red Chin Choppas, unless of course you die and lose all of your chins. Overall, the strategy for catching them is pretty much the same as the Chin Choppas. You could bring a bow, I guess you could do this with Red Chin Choppas too, So go ahead and KO the uh, Chin Choppas that have run far away from your traps, get them to respawn a little bit closer, but not everybody really goes for that. Most players don't go for Black Chin Choppas in general because they are in the wildy and it can be very frustrating, but they're a solid method for wrapping up your 99 Hunter. 
Let's jump into some alternative methods for hunter training if you're not completely happy with that previous list. If you've done the Bone Voyage quest, you can hunt the Herbivore with 80 Hunter and at least 31 Herb Lords to actually get some loot. Herbivore hunting is done through tracking, so to start tracking you have to inspect some rocks, logs, or mushrooms near one of those hunter icons on the map. Some footprints will appear on whatever you expected and now have to follow those footprints to the next object to inspect and continue this until it takes you to a mound where you can attack that mound, subdue the herbivore, and pick the herbs off of its back. It's possible to fail this process through no fault of your own, just RNG and you gotta start over, but it doesn't happen that often and it really doesn't slow you down very much. It's also suggested to be wearing magic secateurs because they give you some extra herbs when you pick the back of the herbivore. Herbivore is an interesting way to grind out your last hunter levels. The XP you gained is based off your hunter and it adds up pretty well once you get used to tracking them down. You also profit a little bit compared to black salamanders, though you'll make more money if you did chinchampas. There is a pet you can get from herbivore. Every time you harvest the back of herbivore, you have a one in 6,500 chance of getting the herby pet. It is suggested to have an herb sack to bank less and use some stamina potions or at least least energy potions of some kind since there's a lot of running though stamina is highly suggested. Overall players tend to choose herbivore over chinchampas or salamanders since it's fairly relaxing to do but also gives solid XP. Drift net fishing and aerial fishing are both fishing methods that also give hunter XP. Drift net fishing is a low requirement method and also gives some half ass rates but aerial fishing is actually a really good way to train both your fishing and your hunter and it works very similar to falconry but with a whole lot less running. I do have a 99 fishing guide that goes in a lot more depth on both drift net fishing and aerial fishing so yes if you want more information on those things I am going to refer you to that guide. Puro Puro is a mini game that can be entered at the center of the wheat field in Xanris. You can get there from any of the other wheat fields in the game, but those portals teleport to random fields over the map and change constantly, so actually doing the mini game efficiently is going to require completing the Lost City quest. Inside Puro Puro is one of the giant wheat fields full of all sorts of implings. I suggest having at least 50 hunter to catch eclectic implings, which are commonly bought for their medium clue loot, but also having just 50 hunter is going to be a little bit frustrating, so the higher hunter the better. Eclectics are very convenient because they have a consistent spot as opposed to some of the more expensive implings. It's also popular to hunt some of the higher tier implings like magpies, ninjas, and the heavily sought after dragon impling. You can bare hand the implings, but you have a better chance to catch them with a butterfly net. And there's also a magic butterfly net that you can get as a reward from Puro Puro by turning in three gourmet, two earth, and one essence impling. You can also get impling jars from the store here if you want to keep the impling instead of just looting it instantly, which I assume most of you want to do. Pro Pro isn't great for hunter training since it has super slow XP rates, but it does give some interesting cash and is a pretty fun mini game compared to just regular hunter training. I believe this is all of the information I wanted to give about Hunter, everybody. If you still have any questions about Hunter training or any tips of your own, let me know in the comments section below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you did enjoy the video or you just got some useful information out of it, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. I also stream on Twitch and I have a channel Discord. Both of those links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and best of luck on your Hunter grind.